Okay, here we're going to spend some time going over a little bit more in depth of plant roots. This is a great image that I took of one of the plants that I was growing, uh, showing you what the roots look like below the soil line. You can see here a lot of kind of root hairs that are protruding here, increasing the surface area, allowing for efficient water and nutrient absorption. So continuing on, roots in general, they anchor the plant and they absorb water and minerals in solution. It's important in solution is to be in a water solution. You can see here for anchoring the plant, like mangroves grown down in Florida to help support this tree. And this is what they look like kind of growing in the soil here. And some are protruding up above the soil and continuing down. All these are help anchoring the plant and also absorbing water and minerals for the plant. So I'm going to spend a little time on this slide. This might be a little initially complex, but I want you to focus in on two points here. So we have the xylem here, and we're looking at getting water and minerals into the xylem. And we do this through our roots, particularly our root hairs, those fine structures. And there's two main ways that we can get water and minerals uptake through the roots. So one root here, again in no particular order, we have the symplastic root. This involves transport of water and minerals through the symplast or cell cytoplasm, which is linked by plasma desmata. Plasma desmata are holes, literally holes within the cell walls. So if we follow this blue root here, we notice that we're entering the cytoplasm of the cell and we're crossing through the holes in the cell membrane. And we see going through here, going through here, ultimately getting to our xylem here. So again, the symplastic root involves transporting water and minerals through the symplast or cell cytoplasm. Now to contrast that, we're here going to look at the apoplastic root. This involves transporting water and minerals through the apoplast, which includes the cell walls, the xylem, and the intercellular space between cells. So notice notice this root, I should say, for water and minerals is a little bit different. We're noticing we're not going in the cytoplasm here, we're going literally through the cell walls and to get to their xylem here, staying within the cell walls and the space between those, the intercellular space, to get ultimately to our xylem. Now, within the roots, we have something called this endodermis here, in this Casparian strip. So, within all roots, we have this. And this is a waxy barrier, so we're in the lipid family here, in the epoplast that force anything in the epoplast to cross the cell membrane for filtration before entering the next step. So we'll notice that this is a barrier here. So we're allowing some water minerals to come in, but there is kind of a physical check that allows or prevents certain materials from getting through. Remember our xylem here, which is the dead part of the apoplast, where the bulk flow up to the roots. And you see this arrow going up, because remember xylem goes from the roots to the shoots. So that's what we're following here. So again, just to recap quickly, symplastic root is going through the cytoplasm, and the apoplastic root is literally going right along the cell walls here. And remember, our Casparian strip is that waxy barrier, particularly for the apoplastic root, allowing filtration before getting into the xylem. Hopefully that wasn't too bad there for getting into the water and mineral uptake for roots to get into the xylem. Let's look a little bit more deeper here at our root structure. These are going to be three regions I'm going to focus on in a little bit more detail. Area of cell division, elongation, and maturation. So at the very tip, we have something called the root cap, and that's evident right here. This protects the newly forming root tips. It secretes a lubricant to aid in the movement of the root tip through the soil. Remember, these root tips are actively growing. This is one of those apical meristems. And this is it magnified about 100 times, and you see the meristem, uh, and we see some dead cells in the elongation zone, kind of working our way up here. Uh, we're focused right now on this area, the root cap, and this is kind of protecting all our recently dividing cells here as this pushes its way through the soil. And you can see here this is uh, meristem, and the numbers are listed should be 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. This elongation zone I'm going to focus in a little bit more detail. Realize the meristem, the highest rate of mitosis, occurs at this number one right here. Now, this area of cell division, the root apical meristem is located right here, and it's protected by the root cap, again, to allow that root to kind of push through the soil. Working our way back from the, the root tip, we have the area of elongation. This is where cells expand in length. 
cells are not actively being moved through the soil. Here they're just expanding. Only the root cap and meristems are the ones actually pushing through the soil. Here our cells are simply just expanding. Area of maturation, so our cells are kind of getting um, more mature, getting more specialized in their structures, and we see the evidence of root hairs beginning to develop. And these are side shoots to the root that can increase the surface area for better absorption. And our vascular similar here, remember that's our xylem and phloem. This kind of puts it all together. You can see I just simply took this image and broke it apart in different areas. You should be familiar with each and what occurs in each of these three areas. Mycorrhizae that I mentioned in the previous video also. Mycorrhizae is a fungus root, it's called. You can see here what it looks like when the root has a mycorrhizae association versus one when it does not. This helps increase the surface area of roots to absorb nutrients and water in the soil. One particular nutrient of note is phosphorus. Phosphorus does not move very much in the soil, so it's kind of fixed in place. So this mycorrhizae, this beneficial fungus, helps increase the surface area and can help the plant uptake phosphorus, particularly if it's low in soils. Uh, this increased web or netting increases the contact, increasing the likelihood that these fungus will come in contact with phosphorus that can take it up for the plant. And remember, the plant in return gives the fungus some sugars that it made up in the leaves, and this is a true symbiotic relationship. Focusing a little bit more on that Casparian strip that I mentioned, they're a cellular feature found in roots of all higher plants. The Casparian strip is a waterproof barrier. We see that evident right here. Chemicals must cross the Casparian strip to enter the xylem. This is why it acts as a little bit of a barrier and a way to filter things. We see the, the apoplastic root and the symplastic root here. Okay, remember, symplastic is going through the plasma desmata, which are simple holes in the uh, cell wall. The apoplastic root is traveling kind of on the side here. This also shows you here the plasma desmata, those holes in the cell wall, and then our apoplastic pathway is literally through the cell versus the symplastic pathway being through the cytoplasm. Just to be able to, a quick comparison, be able to recognize what a monocot root would look like versus a herbaceous dicot. Remember, herbaceous is referring to plants that don't have a woody stem. Woody dicot would be another example. So just be able to recognize what a monocot looks like, that central kind of ring here, and herbaceous dicot kind of has that little T, that little X, that little kind of center small circle region, um, and then surrounded by a bunch of cells here. That K center region distinguishes a dicot from a large center region here, a monocot root.